Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. Today, we're going to be connecting with God through a Bible story about someone who had to make a choice. So stick around, see what the teachers have for you at the end of the program, Kids Connection, and following this program with your classroom teacher. Now, this past week now has been a cool week. However, today is going to be a hot day. It has been a hot day yesterday, today, expected to be a hot day tomorrow. So drink a lot of water, stay in the air conditioning, stay in the pool, go to the beach, make sure that you're not exposed to the sun. It's going to be a hot day. I have my water. I'm drinking a lot of water and I hope you do too. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program. And if you're a regular, it's always good to have you back. Thank you for joining us and for being a part of our Kids Connection program. Last week, I said that we were going to take Kid to make some visits. Now, we took Kid out and Kid stopped by two houses last week and say hello to some kids. And now I want you guys to watch the video as Kid made some visits to the kids here in Glendale and Los Angeles last week. Watch the video. It was so fun to see Kid saying hello to all the boys and girls. And if you want to visit from Kid, send us an email, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. Give us your address. Tell mom and dad to coordinate with me. I will drive Kid to say hello to you and from a distance, and we'll take some pictures. And it's always good to see you guys. I loved seeing the kids. I miss you guys so much. And every chance I get to see one of the kids or one of you guys, I, I, it always brings joy to my heart. Speaking of joy to my heart, we just had a birthday yesterday. Yes, I am talking about Sammy. Sammy had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Sammy. If you are having a birthday or if you are having a birthday that is coming up or already passed and if, if we missed it, send us a note. Let us know that it's your birthday. We want to wish you a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Sammy. Sammy turned five yesterday. We love you. We miss you. And happy birthday to all the boys and girls who we have missed a birthday so far. But let us know. Have mom and dad contact me direct vdkidsconnection at gmail.com we would love to wish you a happy birthday on the air okay thank you so much now i'm going to invite you to stand up get ready to sing our song of the day today the song of the day is i have decided to follow jesus you know this song i know this song let's sing the song together about our theme for today
Wow, that was awesome. I loved it. Singing the song and hopefully you guys got to sing it along with mom, dad, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whoever you're watching with at home. Maybe someone, maybe a friend that is watching you uh, while mom and dad are busy doing something else. So I hope you guys had fun. Now I'm, gonna, I'm going to invite you to bow your head so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful hot Sabbath. Thank you because the boys and girls have joined us today for the program. We ask that you be with us as we learn more about you, as we connect with you today. Learn, help us to um, keep us safe during this pandemic. And thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent. Now, let me ask you something. Have you been to an island before? An island? What is an island? Well, some of you don't know. An island is a piece of land that is surrounded by water. I have been on several islands before. But today's missionary story is about a, a, a girl named Esther who lives in an island. And she decided to do something different. Let's watch the story of Esther who lives in the Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands, a nation of hundreds of islands in the South Pacific, is home to 600,000 people with more than 52,000 Seventh-day Adventists. That is nearly one Adventist for every 11 people. The church in the Solomons is growing. We are excited that God is leading the church. And the church is growing so quickly that we have a huge logistical challenge. We need many Bibles. We have a number of institutions, more than 400 companies, and we've got about 197 uh, yeah, organized churches. In health, we have one hospital. In the education sector, we have uh, 13 high schools, and we have more than 100 uh, schools in total. We have between 14 and 15,000 students attending all our schools. So we have a significant number of baptisms also happening every year through our schools. It's a big mission to run and the islands are scattered over many, many kilometers of ocean. And so we have our challenges. Barikama is uh, actually one of the oldest uh, college here in the Solomon Island. It started way back in 1948. And uh, that was after the Second World War. And it is a place actually, it is more focused on mission for uh, training missionaries. Uh, in this uh, college, we have uh, students who have difficulties in their school fee. There are some children who really struggle. Some children, even because they, were, they are interested to become Adventists, that their parent didn't want to even meet their school fee. So we think that the school must try to help them. Nestor's family is not Adventist and finds it hard to pay school fees, but Nestor chose to come to this school because of its reputation for quality education. I work hard on holidays and even weekends for the school fee. Every weekend I go down to town to make us uh, marketing to earn an income to support me while I'm in school. Nestor would escape the school grounds on Sabbath when everyone was focused on special activities. On this day, she would sell donuts at the market to pay for school and buy herself the supplies she needed. When the school staff noticed Nestor was missing, they were worried, but they soon learned why she was working so hard and they wanted to help. One day, a school administrator called Nestor into the office to tell her she couldn't leave school during Sabbath hours. He also told her that she'd been accepted into the Student Support Fund. She would no longer have to work to pay her fees. I am very thankful of the Student Support Fund, of the school who had supported me with clothes and school fee support. My plan for the future is I want to become somebody to help my parents. And I wish that I could become a, a doctor. Please pray for the people of the Solomon Islands. May God bless them as they learn the truths of the Bible and feel the love of God through human hands. That was so cool what Esther is doing to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now we can help too by 
being supportive with our offerings. So click on the link above where it says offerings and ask mom and dad to help donate to the missionaries that are sharing the love of Jesus, just like Esther in other places in the world. Okay? Thank you so much for your support. Now, today we're going to be talking about um, a, a choice of faith. It's the story of someone in the Bible. But to help you understand about choices, I'm going to ask you to join me on a game that we're going to play right now. This is going to be fun. I don't know what you're going to choose, but you'll know and hopefully you have fun. Join me on the table down here so we can watch, so we can participate on this game today. Okay, now this is the game that I was talking about. And on this game here, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of numbers, one through seven on my table. What it is, is that underneath each bowl, I have something. I forgot which one is which, but, and you don't know which, what is underneath. I want you to choose a bowl. Have you, mom, dad, whoever is watching with you, go ahead and invite them to play this game with you. Choose a different number. You cannot pick the same. So you all, you will all have a different number. And I'm going to reveal them to you and you will see what's underneath each bowl. And let's see what you end up with, okay? If you were, if we were all here present, I was going to invite someone and, uh, and actually give whatever is underneath each bowl to that person that chose, okay? But since we're not, you're, we're just gonna do this for fun. You're gonna choose just to see what you got and uh, I'm gonna reveal it to you. So here we go, drum rolls. Between one and seven, which one did you pick? I'm going to start with number four. Let's see what's underneath number four. Are you ready? Did you pick number four? Here we go. Hey, underneath number four, there is a beautiful, juicy apple. Ooh, this apple smells good. Oh, I wish I could eat it now. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat it after the program. So if you pick number four, you, you end up with an apple. Good for you. That's nice, nice and healthy. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go with number three. I wonder what's underneath number three. Number three is, oh, this is funny. Underneath number three is a whole bunch of screws. Look at this, there are screws. You see that? Uh, I wonder what you're gonna do with the screws if you picked number three. But this is funny, I can actually use a lot of screws. And this is a big one, look at this. Look how big the screw is, that's a big one. But if you chose number three, you, you would have ended up with a whole bunch of screws. Uh, let's see what else here can we go for. Oh, I'm gonna go with number six now, whatever's on number six. Ready? Here we go. Did you pick number six? Underneath number six are a whole bunch of Bible verses. Look at this. You Different colors, there's a blue one, there's a purple one, there's a green, there's a blue. And what you do is you pick one every day and you read that Bible verse, that scripture reading on the day that you choose. So you don't know what you're getting, but you're reading a different Bible verse every single day. And you would have ended up with a whole bunch of Bible verses, okay? Did you pick number six? Did you like it? It was fun? All right, I wanna know what you guys picked, okay? So email me and let me know. Uh, let's go with number number five now. Okay, let's see what's inside number five. Are you ready? Did you pick five? Here we go. Oh, it's dirt. <laughs> it's a whole bunch, it's a bowl full of dirt. Did you pick number five? Did that surprise you? Yeah? Yeah. I don't know what uh, I could put the dirt on, on my plants at home. I wonder what you would do with the, with the dirt that you got if you chose number five. Now let's go with number one. Let's see what's underneath number one. Oh, yes. I'm going to be careful here, but look. Number one, there's water. Can you see it? I hope you can. You see that? Water, fresh water. And as hot as today is, Hmm. Oh, nice and cool water. So if you pick number one, 
you end up with nice, fresh water to drink on this hot day like today, okay? All right, so now we have number two and number seven. Did you pick number two or number seven? We're gonna go with number two first. So let's see what's underneath number two. Whoa, look! If you pick number two, you end up with money. Look at all the money that is here. It, there's a $5, there's a, a $10 bill, there's a $1 bill, there's a $100 bill. Whoa, look at that. If you had chosen number, or if you chose number two, you would have ended up with $116. Whoa, that's a lot of money. Did you pick number two? Yes, you did? No? Uh, did you wish that you had number two? <laughs> okay, now let's go for our last one. Number seven. I wonder what's underneath number seven. Are you ready? Number seven, there is <gasps> a whole bunch of balloons in here. There are 100 water balloons here. There are those balloons that you fill with water and you have water balloon fights. It's a lot of fun. Again, on a hot day like today. Let me see if I can. There you go. You can also play, instead of, instead of playing like water balloons, you can also fill 100 balloons and throw it up in the air and have some fun. What would you do with 100 balloons? If you had chosen 100 balloons, what would you do? Would you have a lot of fun playing with your mom, dad, or siblings? Huh? 100 balloons you would have got if you had chosen number seven. Now, here is everything. We have water. We have $116. We have some screws. We have an apple. We have dirt. We have Bible verses. We have balloons all different options and different choices but you didn't know what was underneath did you let me ask you something would have been better if you knew what was underneath each bowl i think it would have been huh would you have chosen a different bowl had you known what was underneath or would you have still remained or kept the, the the one the choice that you chose if you end up with the dirt or with the screws or with an apple would you have chosen to give that up and instead of choosing number five for the dirt you would have got you would have chosen number two with the money or number one with the water I would like to know if you if it would have made a difference by knowing what was underneath each bowl or each number. You know, kids, our lives is full of choices. We make choices every day. I don't know about you, but I think I make maybe hundreds of choices every day. Some choices are big, other choices are small. And some choices may have a, a big impact in my life and other choices have a small impact on my, on my life. And it can change our lives based on the choices that we have made for better or for worse. Today, we're going to listen to a story in the Bible about a woman named Ruth. Have you heard a story of Ruth who had to make some important decisions? But the most important decision that she had to make was to believe in God. That was the most important decision. We're going to learn about that because our theme for today is a choice of faith. I hope you enjoyed the game that we played. Play the same game with mom and dad at home or with someone else. Hide things underneath cups and choose different items and see what you end up with and see how fun that can be, especially on a, on a day like today that you don't want to be outside on the sun. Maybe this is a fun game that you can play indoors, okay? Now I'm going to invite you to come back and sing our song of the day. Singing our song of the day, which is, I have decided to follow 
Jesus. Because that is a choice that I make. Let's go ahead and sing our song of the day. Stand up and sing with us. No turning back, no turning back. Whoa! Thank you so much for singing with us. It is a choice that we have to follow Jesus. Remember that. Let's go ahead and close our program with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the fun that we had at Kids Connection today. Thank you for all the boys and girls that are watching this at home. Bless them and help them to make right decisions every day of their lives. Be with the, with the teachers that are going to present the story now of Ruth and help us to learn a little bit more, a, a little more about you and get connected with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent. Thank you for being a part of, our, of another Kids Connection program. Please come back next week as we have another activity planned for you and songs and fun so i can't wait to see you guys here at kids connection i wish i could give you a hug but we know the new thing now it is air hug so here comes my air hug to you guys i love you i miss you and i will see you guys soon okay don't forget to drink a lot of water and this weekend because it is a holiday weekend we are not having Zoom, a uh, kid to kid Zoom tomorrow. So we're not having that tomorrow, okay? Don't worry about it. Uh, we will come back next week for another Kids Connection program. Until then, God bless you. I'll see you later. Bye bye, kids. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope. No. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. We're in a new month. It's September today. Wow, September 5th. I hope that this will be a really good month for you. 
Let's go ahead and sing our good morning song. Good morning to you, good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you, good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. Good morning to you, good morning to you. How are you today? makes you feel happy this morning, doesn't it? I would like to give a greeting to some of you. We would like to greet Sky and Paul, Ethan and Ellis, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, Sammy, Sammy, happy birthday this month. I'd like to greet Carlina and Tyel. Tyel also has a birthday, happy birthday. I'd like to greet Aiden and Vida, Max, Caitlin, Ariane has a birthday, and so does Vashti. Happy birthday. I'd like to greet Moses and Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade, Josiah, Nicholas, Federico, Francisco, Will and Mia. Andrea has a birthday this month. Happy birthday. Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Aliyah, Ethan, JR and Seth and Zori and Baby. I hope you have a good lesson today. Well, our lesson today is about a woman named Ruth. And Ruth made some choices. We all make choices too, don't we? I want to ask you, what kind of choices do you make? You make choices to listen to mommy and daddy and obey. You make choices as to what shirt you want to wear that day. You make all kinds of different choices. What if your mommy and daddy said, you can either have this candy bar or you can have this vegetable, carrots or whatever it might be. What would be your choice, candy or vegetables? You make all kinds of choices. We're gonna find out what choices Ruth made this time. She made a very important choice. Our lesson today is about a woman named Ruth. And Ruth made some choices. We all make choices too, don't we? I wanna ask you, what kind of choices do you make? You make choices to listen to mommy and daddy and obey. You make choices as to what shirt you wanna wear that day. You make all kinds of different choices. What if your mommy and daddy said, you can either have this candy bar or you can have this vegetable, carrots or whatever it might be. What would be your choice, candy or vegetables? You make all kinds of choices. We're gonna find out what choices Ruth made this time. She made a very important choice. Let's find out what it was. In the Bible, there is a book called Ruth. Ruth is a very important story because it tells us how she made good choices. Now let's take a look at our felt board and see what we can see. A long time ago, there lived a man named Elimelech and he was married to a lady. Her name is Naomi. They had two sons. They lived in the town of Bethlehem. And at that time in Bethlehem and in the whole land, there was a severe famine. That means there was no rain, there were no crops growing, so they did not have enough food. They could not make bread. They did not have much food to eat. So Elimelech had heard that in another country called Moab, there was more food there. So he had an important decision to make about going to that other land and leaving his home. Well, in that other land, the people did not believe in the one true God. So it was a really important decision to make. His family might starve if he stayed in Bethlehem. He would have maybe enough food and enough work to do in the other country, 
but they did not believe in God. What should he do? Well, he decided that he would go to that other land and take his children and his wife and go to the other land. So they set off on their journey. And it was a little bit of ways and they had to walk the whole time. When they got to the new country, they found a home to live in and there was more food there because there had been rain there, there was more crops that were growing. They found a house and Elimelech found something to do for work. And Naomi stayed home with her two sons and took care of them and cooked food and took care of the house. That's what women did back then. Now, they were there for a long time and their children grew up and they were no longer young boys. They became grown-ups and they lived in the land of Moab. They decided that they needed to get married. So they married two girls that lived in that land. Their names were Ruth and Orpah. This is Orpah and this is Ruth. They got married and they lived all in the same house. Well, something very sad happened a little bit later is that Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. They had been there so long, they had grown old. Now they had grown up children and they had daughters-in-laws and they grew old too. And then Elimelech died. Naomi was very, very sad, but she was happy that she still had her two sons and she still had her daughter-in-laws to take care of her. And then something else sad happened. Her two sons both died also. Then she was left with her daughter-in-laws and she was very, very sad. They were three women alone. And back then they couldn't go out and get jobs. There weren't jobs for women back then. They took care of the house and they took care of the children and that's what they did. Their husbands and sons took care of them. So if something happened to them, then they were in trouble. They didn't have any food to eat, no home to live in, and no way to make any money. Now Naomi had a big decision to make. She heard that back in her home, they had more food than they did before and she had a decision to make. Would she stay in Moab or would she go back to her home? What would she do? Well, she decided to go back to Bethlehem, but she knew that her daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth, would have trouble finding things to do there. So she told them that they should go back to their families. Now they both loved her very, very much and they did not want to leave her. But finally, she convinced them that they should go home. She convinced Orpah anyway. She sadly kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went home to her family. But Ruth would not leave. She said, don't try to talk me into leaving you. I will not leave you. Where you go, I will go and your God will be my God, is what Ruth said. She would not leave Naomi. Finally, Naomi was convinced that she would take Ruth with her. So they set out on their journey and they came home to Bethlehem. And all of the friends that Naomi had had before said, is this you, Naomi? You have changed so much. Naomi said, do not call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara, because Mara means bitter. She was still very, very sad that her husband and her sons had died. Well, Naomi and Ruth had a lot of decisions to make. They didn't have any place to live. They didn't have any way of making money. They didn't have any food. What would they do? Well, there would be a lot of decisions for them to make. 
But Ruth had made the most important decision already. She had made the decision to trust God and follow Naomi to Bethlehem. If Ruth and Naomi lived in 2020 like we do, what do you think she, they would have done when their husbands died? Well, yes, they would have gone out and got jobs so they could pay for their own food, their own bills, their own homes. They may have even already had jobs before that. But back when they lived, that was not an option for them. They didn't have jobs to go to and they didn't have money to pay for things. Money really didn't exist so much. People used the things that they raised as trade items. The men worked on their land to grow food and took care of the animals. And the women took care of the homes, raised the children and cooked the meals. So they didn't really have any place to go to earn money so they could buy food. They didn't even have a home to live in. The only chance that they would have had to have food and a place to live is if a relative of Naomi's took them into his home as a part of his own family. Otherwise, their only option was to be without food or a home. They might have had to beg people to give them food. Well, that would have been pretty sad. Now, next week, we're going to find out what the next part of the story is. Well, Ruth made a choice. She made a decision to trust God. She chose faith in God. That was a big decision. She left her home and her land, her family. She left everything behind. Now, what is faith? Faith is a belief in something. Faith in God is choosing to trust God in every situation. Some people find it hard to believe in God because they can't see God. Can you see air? No, you can't see air. Even though we can't see air, we know it is there. Like this candle. If I light this candle, you can see it, right? You can see the flame. Now, what do I need to do to put it out? Well, yes, I can blow on it or I can wave it like that and it will go out. The air made it go out. You don't see the air because it's clear, but you know that it's there. Even though you can't see air, you know that it is there. We cannot live without air. We can't see it. We can't smell it. But it is there. To have faith in God means to believe there is a God even though we cannot see him. Even though we can't see him, we do see the things that he does. All the things that he's made give us proof that there is a God. Even though we can't see him, he shows up in his creation. He shows up in the Bible and he shows up through answered prayers. Millions of people have trusted God, even though they couldn't see him. There are two very important things to learn from the Bible verse that we are going to learn. The most important decision you will ever make is the one to believe in God. God will always show us that God cares for us and that he loves us. Well, we're going to learn a new verse this month, and there are two very important things to learn from this verse. Number one is that there is a God. And number two is that God is good. The most important decision you can make is to have faith in God, to believe that God will do what he says he will do. He will always show us that he cares for us. Here is our new memory verse. We'll be studying this for the next three or four weeks. All right, you ready to hear it? Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Let's try that again. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those 
who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Let's say that one more time. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Remember that God gives us the power to choose. God gives us free will to make many decisions. We will not always make the right choices for ourselves. Sometimes we'll make wrong decisions, but hopefully we will learn from our mistakes. Hopefully we will learn from our mistakes and make better decisions next time. Some decisions are not as important, such as what you will wear that day, but maybe you should finish your homework. Certainly the biggest decision of all is the one to say yes to Jesus. Ruth made the decision to leave her home behind and follow the one true God. The decision to follow God does not mean that you will not have bad things happen to you, but it does mean that you are never alone. God is with you and will help you and take care of you. Your next step is to trust God to help you make the choices that will help you to grow strong and brave. When we follow God, we can trust God will guide us in the right way. When we place our faith in God and God's plans, we can move forward every day, even if it means leaving some things behind. We can leave selfishness, sin, bad habits, and wrong things behind. It's a daily choice. Let's bow our heads and talk to God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you've come down to earth to help us, to help us to make good choices. We choose to love you. Amen. Now for our craft today, we're going to color a picture of Ruth and Naomi on their way back to Bethlehem. Parents, when you see the picture on the website, it will look like this. Ruth told Naomi, I will go with you back to the town where you used to live. I hope you've enjoyed our story today, boys and girls. Next week, we will hear more about Ruth and Naomi. Have a happy Sabbath. Goodbye.